Well, hello to you all once again today. We give you a very warm Wade Street Church welcome to our service this morning, whoever you are and wherever you're watching from today. I hope you're well on the way to being ready for Christmas. But amidst all the busyness of decorating the home, cooking the food and sending your letters to Santa, let's just take a few minutes now to sit down and focus on the story behind it all. Our service this morning is being led by our children with the help of Claire and the children's work team here at the church. Lots of good things in store this morning. We're really looking forward to what they've got prepared. So without any further ado, let's join them in singing our first carol. My important part in this story was I visited Mary to tell her she was going to have a baby. God's son called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. I like Angel Gabriel because she is shining and can be found on top of a Christmas tree. I am Joseph. I am in the Nativity story. I am in the story because I am Jesus' father. I am important to the story because I help Mary get to Bethlehem. I like Joseph because he is kind and courageous. I am Mary and I am in the nativity story. I am there because I am Jesus' mother. In the nativity story, I get there with Joseph on a donkey and a bright light from the Star of Bethlehem helps us get to the stable. A few hours later, some shepherds come and they um, kneel down to Jesus, who is the king. And also, a few years later, some the three kings come to Bethlehem and they give Jesus presents. I like Mary 
because she because she is kind, obedient, and she cares um, about Jesus and she does lots of things that God asks her to do. I am I am a shepherd. I'm a shepherd because of um, um, because of I am in God's story. Otherwise, if I wasn't a shepherd, I wouldn't be in this play. And I like a shepherd because of I like shepherds because of they look after sheep, and sheep are my favourite animals. The shepherds. And these are the sheep that follow the star. And, and the sheep helped the star shine bright. The angels told me where Jesus was and the star helped me get there and, 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 and I was the first one to know about Jesus. The star helped me get to the baby. I am the star of Bethlehem. I am in the nativity story to shine brightly so that everybody can come and see the baby Jesus. I look over the stable to see what's going on. It's a pity that the roof is there. I like, I like the star because it's sparkly. And sparkly usually means it can shine very bright. Gabriel the angel was busy. He'd been sent to earth to bring some messages. And today's message was for a young woman called Mary. Mary was at home, doing the normal everyday things and thinking about Joseph. She was excited because she was going to be married soon. The last thing she expected was an angel to appear. At first she was a bit frightened. Gabriel had got used to this and told her not to be afraid. He told her that God wanted her to have a very special baby. Who would be God's son? Call him Jesus, said Gabriel. Mary wasn't sure. She thought about it. She didn't know what Joseph would think. She prayed about it. She said, yes. Joseph had been working very hard, sawing and nailing and trying to forget the news that Mary had given him. The news that Mary was going to have a baby had upset him. He wasn't sure what to do. So he worked and worked until he fell asleep. Gabriel the angel saw his chance. He tiptoed into the workshop. He tiptoed right into Joseph's dream. Don't worry, he said to Joseph. Everything that Mary told you is true. She's having God's very special son. His name will be Jesus. Get married just as you were planning. So that is what Joseph did. Mary and Joseph started to get ready for the arrival of their baby. They were getting excited to meet this new little person. Then the Roman Emperor, Caesar Augustus, wanted to tax people. He ordered everybody to go to the town of their ancestors, so he could count how many people there were. So Mary and Joseph had to get ready for a journey all the way to Bethlehem, just around the time when their baby would be born.
People came from the north and the south, the east and the west, to Bethlehem. When Mary and Joseph arrived, rather later than some, because they had had to travel slowly, everywhere was full. There was not a room to be had until one kind innkeeper offered the only space left, a stable. On that very first Christmas, in the stable the kind stranger had given them to stay in, Mary's baby was born. It wasn't the best place to have a baby, really. It was rather cold and a bit smelly. Yet here he was. Mary held him, and Joseph looked at him, and they thought this little child was wonderful. How strange that this very special baby should be born in such an ordinary place. They didn't have a cradle, or a crib or cot, to put Jesus in, so they wrapped him up and placed him in the manger nestled in the straw for the animals. This was the best Christmas present ever. Not only for Mary and Joseph, but for you and me and everyone. Jesus, that little baby, was God's special present to all of us, to show us how much God loves us, a love so big it circles the world. Gabriel the angel was busy again. This time he was in the hills near Bethlehem, looking for some shepherds. They were just settling around the fire for the night. Then something extraordinary happened. The sky lit up and Gabriel appeared. The shepherds and the sheep were very surprised. Don't be afraid, I've wonderful news, said Gabriel. A very special baby has been born in Bethlehem. He's the one we have all waited for. Then suddenly there wasn't just one angel, but lots of them. They started to sing, glory to God and peace to everyone. The shepherds just stood there and listened. The music was wonderful. Even the sheep bleated to join in. Then, as suddenly as Gabriel had appeared, all the angels left and the music faded. I want to see the baby, said the shepherd boy. So the shepherds grabbed the littlest lambs, who couldn't look after themselves, and ran down the hillside to find this special child. They wandered around Bethlehem, searching for a new baby. They had to search hard. Eventually they found the stable. Mary and Joseph hadn't found much of a welcome in Bethlehem. No family had taken them in, so they were surprised when they had visitors at the stable. The shepherds told them about the angels. Each looked at the baby in the manger. He's beautiful and special, they said. A long, long way east of Bethlehem, it was a cold night. Some wise men, called Magi, were watching the skies. When a new star appeared, they knew it meant something very important. A new king had been born. Let us go and welcome this king, they said. So they packed their bags. They made sure they each had a present for the new king of the Jews. Then they set off on a long journey. They travelled up hills, along rivers and through deserts to get to Jerusalem. Days and days later the Magi arrived in Jerusalem. 
The stars say there's a new king of the Jews. We have brought him presents. Where is he? they asked. King Herod didn't know. He wasn't expecting God's special child to be born yet. Herod was unhappy, as he was the king. He asked the priests and the scribes where this king was to be born. In Bethlehem, they said. Go to Bethlehem, said Herod. Find out all about this new king. The Magi sighed. It seemed their journey still wasn't over. They left Jerusalem and saw the star ahead of them. They followed it to Bethlehem, but not to a palace or even a house. The star stopped over a stable. Well, that's a surprise, said the Magi to each other. They tiptoed inside, and there in the manger, all bundled up, was the very special baby they had travelled so far to see. Quietly, so they didn't wake him, they got out the presents. The first was gold. The second present was frankincense. The last present was myrrh. This time, God, who has given us so many good things, was the one who received the gifts. As we celebrate with our presents, remember that little special baby in the manger. God come to us, living with us. Let's say happy birthday to the special baby king, Jesus. reading is from it begins in Bethlehem from the Bible so society God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak 
and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out this praise. He's amazing! Christmas right, it needed to da 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 POOM! Away in a manger, no Christmas happy. The little Lord Jesus, I sleep on the hay. The stars in the bright sky flow down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus, I sleep on the hay. Gifts are an important part of Christmas celebrations, aren't they? I brought here with me today two gifts to show you. They're for my godsons. What do you think is inside them? I've wrapped one really plain and very simply, and then I've gone to town with this one and put a little bit of string and a bow and a, and a Santa clip. So both have been wrapped, and do you think one's more expensive and more exciting than the other one? Do you know, years ago when I owned my own business, Earl's Court offered me a free stand at their Christmas fair in London with the provision that I would hold wrapping demos throughout the day. We can also pay companies or people to wrap gifts for us, can't we? It's a big business, present wrapping, at this time of year. The emphasis is put on how the gift looks, how beautiful it is, and not necessarily what's placed inside it. But for me, although I do like my gifts to look nice, and I will be making Toby's look just as beautiful as Harry's. For me, the joy is handing out a nice gift and seeing their faces as they and watching their reaction as they have the gift and then as they unwrap the present and discover carefully what's been chosen for them there's a saying it's the giving 
and not the receiving. I was often told this as a child and I've used this phrase quite often as a parent too. I wonder what joy God felt when he gave us his first Christmas gift all those thousands of years ago. Do you think God was beaming when he saw the wise men and the shepherds meeting baby Jesus for the first time? I think he would have been. I believe he'd be doing somersaults. Not only did God gift us Jesus that Christmas, he also gifted us with the Holy Spirit to be used in his glory. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he talks of God knowing us and having plans for us even before we were born. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? That God was able to do that for each and every one of us. Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you before you were born. I set you apart for special work. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So God set apart us by giving us gifts to use for his special work. Do you think our gifts had a big fancy bow on them or do you think they had fancy paper and Santa's clips? What's inside each and every one of us is definitely not simple and there's no amount of wrapping paper and bows and clips to show everyone how special this is. What we need to learn to do, and some of us already have done this, is find ways to hear what God is calling us to do through our gifts, to find ways to act out God's love and message with one another. Now you may enjoy doing things, you may be really good at some things, some things such as reading, when you read, you may love to read, and those listening to you may hear so much more than just the words you're saying. You can inspire people, help people grow in their knowledge, or merely comfort someone, all of which are very important. Like when Henry read his funny story to us, it brought joy to us hearing it, didn't it? And this year especially, we want joy in abundance, don't we? If you're musical like Elsie and Theo and Primrose, you connect with people in your audience. You help people find places of joy to sit back in and take time out, take time out from their busy whirlwind lives. What is really important is that when we discover, and this could be now or this could be in many years to come, what these gifts are that God has bestowed upon us that when we do, we listen to God and we will see real changes take place. The joy that can be turned into hope and hope can change so much. A lady I follow and have read many of her books, Anne Rothkamp, talks about walking with Jesus this Advent, allowing him to open our eyes, turning them to the miraculous things, to turn everything inside out. People care about what's on the outside the paper, the bows, the wrapping, and all the sparkle. But God cares about what's inside us, the gifts inside our hearts that he's placed on each and every one of us. So this Christmas, my request to you all is to ask you to set aside some time to think about God's gift he's placed in you. How might you use it and bring joy to people's lives as we approach? 2021. Amen. Merry Christmas to you all.
the opportunity to have a Chris Jingle. So on the 20th of December between 2 and 3 p.m. if you pop down to Way Street Church you'll be able to collect a carrier bag and inside the carrier bag will be all the items you'll need to make your own Chris Dingle safely at home. So here we have our Chris Dingle orange. The orange that represents the world. The red tape that goes around the outside of the orange is representing Jesus' blood and giving his life for us. Then we have a candle. The candle represents Jesus' light in the world. And finally, we have four sticks with sweets on. These sticks represent the four seasons and the fruit of the Spirit. And pop the last two in. Okay. And there we have your Christingle. We really hope you enjoy making your Christingles at home. And if you want to share with us your finished Christingles, it'd be lovely if you post them on our Facebook page. Thanks very much to my helper. Merry Christmas. Here are our prayers. Dear God, thank you for guiding us through this tough stage of life. Thank you for keeping many people safe, whether it's your family or someone else. Thank you for saving their lives. At this time of Christmas, we remember Jesus' birth. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for all the work you have done. I love you, you are the best. Amen. Amen. Thank you God for Emily and Theo. And thank you great granddad. And then in granddad, amen. Dear God, thank you for my family. Thank you for sending baby Jesus that Christmas day. Amen. Care of joy, Lord. Love will come on Christmas Day. Help us to remember the true meaning of Christmas. Not the presents, not the dinner, but your humble birth in the stable with all the animals. Help us that we should prepare ourselves for the coming of you. What matters is not the sparkling Christmas tree, nor the presents under the tree, but the oh so special birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, God. Find your full time spend your family amen. Well, that's all been great, hasn't it? Thank you very much indeed to all the children who've been involved and special thanks to our children's worker, Claire Taylor Dedman, for putting it all together. Great stuff, thank you. Later on today on the Wade Street Church YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch our carol service, which is being led by Colin Bridal and the musicians from our church here. That's always a great event, so make sure you don't miss it. Uh, sadly, we won't be providing mulled wine and mince pies for you this year afterwards, but I'm sure you'll find something in the larder you can tuck away after the service. Uh, on Christmas morning, we're going to be having uh, a special Christmas celebration at 
live on Zoom. So look out for details of that on our Facebook page or website. But a final prayer now before we finish. This was written by the author Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote, amongst other things, Treasure Island. Let's pray. O oh God, our loving Father, help us rightly to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be your children, and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all today through the next five sleeps over Christmas Day itself and then forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a really, really happy Christmas, won't you? And we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.